Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the timelines for characters that might possibly cameo in the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Now, I will say up front, just getting a movie with Deadpool and Wolverine and no one else would have been enough, would have been awesome. But they keep hinting at some big name cameos. So it's kind of fun just to guess at who might appear and to talk about the timelines from their original movies. So to do that, I will have to talk about some high level plot points from those movies. So there might be some minor spoilers, but I'm just letting you know that going in, I will try to reduce the spoilers as much as possible. So let's dive right in and see what we can find out. We've now entered July, so we have a new contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment. You could win a book or a steel book. Best of luck. And because we have finished June, we now need to announce the June winner, or I should say winners, because I continue to have trouble getting people responding. I feel like Batman in the Batman and Robin movie, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. I'm having trouble getting rid of books and steel books. So I even respond to each comment to let the person know you won. And I still did not hear back from two previous winners. Okay, so that means we have three to announce. June's winner, that's Robert Angus, excellent comment on the What If video, and then the two replacement winners. Arrow 9091 had a very funny comment on the President's video, and uh, Lawson, you're going to have to tell me what that stands for. <laughs> maybe Lawrence? Maybe an abbreviation for Lawrence? Anyway, fantastic comment on the Deadpool and Wolverine video. And I did spoiler it because... Uh, the, the, the comment mentions one of the cameos that we know is going to be in the movie. And just in case people don't want to know, because I know a lot of people avoid the trailers, I, I, I went ahead and knocked it out. But anyway, all three of you, great comments. Please go to the About section of my channel. You can reach out to me via email or Discord, and I will get you your prizes right away. All right. We also have a membership option uh, with some cool perks. So check that out in case you might be interested. Now, let's talk about whether or not some of these characters might appear in the movie and why I'm mentioning them. Well, in the trailer, there's a comment that Deadpool makes to Wolverine where he says people have waited decades for this fight. It's not going to be easy. Now, the interesting thing is they frame it as though a character who we do see in the trailer is the one he's talking about. But, you know, without going into that character, in case you don't want to know, the key is Wolverine has fought that character before. But Deadpool's saying someone we've waited decades to see him fight. Well... I'll tell you who we've waited decades, right? Is Hulk. I mean, the Hulk-Wolverine battles have, have been famous throughout the comics with the very first appearance of Wolverine, right? So I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't want to get my hopes up. If it doesn't happen, I'm still going to love the movie. But boy, are they really hinting we might see this. So fingers crossed, that would be incredible. So what about Ghost Rider, though? Why am I including Ghost Rider? Well, because let's face it, Nick Cage is up for anything, right? Mr. Not the Bees meme. He, the dude would be more than willing to show up for like five minutes or five seconds even and just high five and then take off. So who knows? I kind of doubt we're going to see Ghost Rider, to be honest. But hey, we can dream, right? We can dream. Surely in Secret Wars. If nothing else, we're going to see him in Secret Wars. Okay, so let's talk about the timelines for these characters. So with the Hulk, I'm going to talk about his 2003 movie uh, and then uh, his video game as well because people have asked me to cover the video games. I don't know whether they're canon. That's part of what we'll discuss in the breakdowns. Okay, so the Hulk movie. So we start with flashbacks to Bruce's father, David, and some experimentations that he's done on animals. You see jellyfish here, uh, and the date, notice, uh, February 8th of 1965. Uh, we see him doing more uh, experimentation, starfish this time, February 22nd of 1965. And then sea cucumbers, uh, April uh, 19th of 1965. Then we see a flashback where he's confronted by Thunderbolt Ross himself, uh, uh, and we notice the date, 1966, and Ross is saying manipulating the immune system is dangerous and stupid. And then he is crystal clear when he says, no human subjects. So, of course, what does David Banner do? He experiments on himself. Yikes. And that is going to become a big problem, not just for him, but also for his son, Bruce. All right. So then uh, we learn that he's continuing to test himself now, and we get a date of June 25th of 1967. Then some point after that, uh, not long after, I suspect, but we don't know the exact amount of time, Edith then tells him she is pregnant. And of course, with Bruce, that that's going to be her baby. 
or their baby. So, okay, we don't know the exact amount of time there. That's the one big question that I have, and we'll see my analysis in a moment of trying to place all this together. Okay, so then we do get a flashback where a young uh, Bruce is being tested by David, his father, to see if he was affected. And it will turn out that, yes, he was affected, but the effects of what he inherited from his dad don't get triggered until years later. So we'll get to that. Then we do learn that something very traumatic happens at age four, and you'll see why I say four in a moment. I'm not gonna say what it is because they make it a big mystery for like most of the movie, and it isn't necessary to discuss it to discuss the timeline. So I'm gonna leave that a mystery, uh, but basically we, we definitely see Edith and David fighting, and then something traumatic happens. But why do we know he's four? Because Ross says, you were four years old when you saw it, the very traumatic event. Okay, great, so we know that Bruce is four, uh, at this point, okay? Uh, we also learned that at the same point, Betty, who's played by the awesome Jennifer Connelly, I mean, I mean, I love Liv Tyler. She did a fantastic job in the Edward Norton movie, but man, Jennifer Connelly is the best. Anyway, she is two years old when all this happens. I don't know that that really matters for figuring out the timeline, but it was an age mention, so I thought I'd bring it up. So she's two years old. When we see her, that's her little two-year-old self, meeting with Ross for, for, for lunch, uh, and then he gets a call from the MPs, and it turns out that David is going to sabotage his lab. And boom, we see the sabotage, that big explosion. Now, that actually has nothing to do with Bruce turning into the Hulk. I, it seems like it should, but it doesn't. Um, but anyway, uh, it's important because all this is happening at the same time. Bruce is four, and Betty is two at this point. All right, so then we get a flashback where Bruce is heading off to college. It's not a particularly helpful flashback because they don't give us any years that I could see at least. Um, but he's ready to head off to college. Then later, we do get on the wall an article written by him that reveals uh, underneath his name, and by the way, he's taking an alias, Bruce uh, Krenzler, which you have to watch the movie if you wanna know why. But um, anyway, uh, notice it does say when he went to college and uh, to graduate school. So I'm gonna blow it up a bit. It's still really blurry. But he got an SB, which is basically BS, a Bachelor's of Science at MIT in 1999, and his master's uh, from Berkeley in 2000. Now, I don't know that I understand these dates at all, because remember, his mother said she was pregnant probably in 68, so maybe he was born in 69, so he was 30 when he graduated from MIT, and this guy's really smart, so I, I, I kind of feel like these dates are wrong, but they don't really affect anything on the placement of the movie per se. So I just bring them up so you're aware. But I don't, I don't, I don't trust those dates, to be honest. Um, all right, so let me get a nice cameo in present day with Stan Lee, RIP, and Lou Ferrigno, who of course played the Hulk in uh, the TV show. And they're both security guards. And <laughs> it says security ought to be beefed up. Well, I'll tell you who's beefed up is Lou Ferrigno, man. That dude is jacked. He is jacked. Uh, anyway, then... Now, finally, all this time later, and we'll get to when this is happening in a moment, but Bruce uh, is involved with a, a malfunctioning gamma sphere, they refer to it, and that triggers uh, the reaction in him that he got, that he inherited from his dad all those years ago, and he turns into the Hulk for the first time. Pretty cool scene. Um, in, and yeah, destroys the lab in the process, and that's important. So just, he destroys the lab because we learn that his dad, uh, uh, David, was put away 30 years ago. Okay, now we're getting some good facts here. So his dad was put away 30 years ago, and that was soon after the incident happened when Bruce was four. So theoretically, therefore, Bruce is 34. Okay, great. Um, we, we still don't know exactly when he was born, but at least we know he's 34. And then we know that the lab that we just saw being destroyed uh, was one month after uh, David got released from prison. He gets released, and one month later, your lab is destroyed. So the hardest thing to figure out is, is the movie in 2002 or 2003? So I'm gonna kind of cheat, and I'm gonna look at the 2008 movie. Both of these were by Universal, if you remember. And the 2008 movie with Edward Norton, which is in the MCU, let me stress, but the 2003 movie is not. However, I think Universal originally tried to tie the two of them together because they're five years apart, 2003 and 2008, and notice even in the movie, Ross says he made it five years and got across borders without making any mistakes. So I think Universal was like, hey, these are tied together, and of course Feige's like, 
hey, no, they're not. <laughs> and he even moves the Edward Norton movie to 2010 in the timeline, but it doesn't matter. My point is Universal made them five years apart, and I think that's important. So let's put all this together and try to come up with a year for uh, this movie. So we learn in the movie that in 1965, David Banner begins experimenting. In 1966, he's told to stop it by Ross, but instead he experiments on himself. We see in 1967, he's evaluating the results of those tests. Then I'm going to guess that, it, that it's a little bit later. I'm going to go with 1968 when Edith shares that she's pregnant. That would mean Bruce would be born in 1969. That would mean he would be age four in 1973. 30 years later, David is really, his father is released from prison. Now we're 2003, and that would mesh with the 2008 movie being five years later, which again, there's no tie between the new two movies anymore, but originally I think there were. So I'm going to go with 2003 for the placement of this movie for those reasons. Let me know your thoughts, but the bottom line is the movie does not give us a specific year, and this is the best I can come up with. So when in the year does it happen? Well... Again, we don't get months very clearly. We do see it's nice and pretty outside. That looks very much like spring, summer, but it's also in California. So the setting of the movie makes it so it's probably green most of the year. But nonetheless, I'm going to go with the June time frame of 2003 because that's actually when the movie came out. So when in doubt, go with that, right? So a couple other things to point out that I do think is kind of fun about this movie. They use like a comic panel style of, of editing. So notice like this scene, you see both Ross and uh, Betty uh, in, in, in like two different panels. Uh, here's a crazy one where like the panels move across the screen, even the closed captioning. Notice Glenn is on the left and Glenn saying, hey, is on the right. And that's Glenn Talbot, by the way. Uh, and here we actually see four different scenes at once. I thought it was kind of cool that they did this, but it, it, honestly, it became a little distracting because they did it so much, but it was pretty cool. I mean, even the credits, the end credits, had uh, comic book-like panels, so that was fun. And then I will mention, uh, tell me your thoughts if you've seen the movie. I think his dad turns into the absorbing man, I guess, because at one point we see him absorbing electricity. Uh, this is a little dark. This scene is dark, I know, but he's absorbing rocks and fighting the Hulk. I don't know. It was just honestly a bit of a weird movie. It, it's fun. It's worth a watch if you've never seen it, but it, it was a little weird. Uh, then, interestingly, at the end of the movie, they do a one-year time jump. And in that time jump, we see that he's somewhere they're speaking Spanish, obviously, and he's giving out medicine to people in need, like this little boy. And then uh, these rebels come in, and they say, take all the medicine, and uh, Banner gives his infamous, you're making me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. So that's cool. But anyway, it's a one-year time jump from the main part of the movie. So what about the main part of the movie then? When is that happening? I'm going to go with June of 2003. Uh, that seems to add up with everything we saw. And also, um, it's when the movie came out. So why not, right? All right, let me know your thoughts on that. So now we go to the video game. So in the video game, uh, it starts with Hulk battling Ross. So here we see Hulk, and he's taking on the military. Um, so interesting. I, I did not expect that he would be fighting Ross since we do see in the 2008 movie that it's been five years that he eluded the military, but they take care of that because then they tell us he was awakening from a dream. So he was having nightmares of the military attacking him. Cool. So it all still works, right? And then he receives an offer of help from a former mentor. And that really leads into the whole story. So Bruce leaves, I'm assuming wherever he was uh, in uh, that they were speaking Spanish, you know, leaves there to go reach out to this mentor. Now they do give us a real nice timeline hint. They say, uh, Bruce says, I need to avoid the military. It's been a year since they hunted me. Okay, so this would be a year after that movie. Although, if you remember in the movie, it jumped forward a year. So I'm guessing this scene at the end of the movie was right before he then got the call from Dr. Crawford to you know go and uh, hopefully get something to help him with his uh, transformations, I, I guess. It's kind of interesting that they, because I, I don't think this is a year after the, the last scene or we're now two years from the main part of the movie. Anyway trying my best, but they don't give us a lot to work with here. But anyway, you get some real cool Hulk smashing throughout the video game, and the ultimate bad guy is the leader. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to go with the fact that it's been a year since he's been eluding the military, which would put us in June of 2004. All right, so now we move on to the Ghost Rider timeline. So with Ghost Rider, I'll be doing both of the movies and once again be doing the video game. And while the Hulk video game fit in pretty well in the continuity, we're going to see there are some pretty big issues with the Ghost Rider video game, so I really want your feedback on that. All right, so the first Ghost Rider movie. 
that starts with a flashback. Uh, many years ago, they explain, and we are going to get a pretty specific timing for this, um, a, a, a ghost writer, uh, an earlier ghost writer, was sent to the village of San Venganza, and in particular, to fetch a contract worth a thousand evil souls. So this is going to kind of become the, the key point of the entire movie, is getting a hold of this contract, because that ghost writer realized he could never let the devil get his hands on it, and he outran the devil himself. So the devil really wants that contract back. Uh, so that, that's going to be an important part of the movie. And uh, in present day, we learn that it was 150 years ago. The last one was 150 years ago. So, okay, great. Um, but we need to know when the present day is to be able to go back 150 years from that, obviously. Um, so yeah, this little town of, of San Venganza is going to be very, very important throughout the movie. Okay, so... Then we get a flashback to Johnny Blaze uh, when he was uh, a teenager, and he is a stunt rider with his father. And really we appreciate this. Thank you very much. We get an exact date, May 2nd of 1986. Wouldn't it be great if every movie was that clear on the flashbacks? But anyway, he learns that his dad has a rapidly spreading cancer. So he decides to do a deal with the devil. Never a good idea, uh, but notice uh, Johnny Blaze, there is his name, and that's his blood dropping onto the contract. And the devil says, oh, that'll do just fine, referring to the drop of blood. Now, I really like um, the actor playing uh, the devil in this movie. He was okay. It's a different actor in Spirit of Vengeance, the next movie. Uh, and they do explain that the devil has to keep changing bodies because he burns them out. So I like that they actually explain why it's a different actor, but I really liked uh, this actor as the devil. He was awesome. Uh, but then, never trust the devil, right? So he cures his dad of cancer, but then his dad dies the next day in a, in a tragic accident. So yikes. Um, so much for that. But not, nonetheless, Johnny Blaze now has to do his contract with the devil. So yikes. All right. So we do see this uh, gravestone for Barton Blaze, his dad. But come on now. Really? No dates? No dates? Not when he was born or when he died? Anything? I mean, what, I was getting so used to how nice they had been in giving us dates, because you might remember on, in my Punisher um, the timeline, look at that, they gave us dates. And even better, in the Blade timeline, oh my word, they give us an exact day even. So then we get nothing on this one. Um, but that's fine. We did see the letter, which was really specific. So that's great. All right. Johnny was 17, we learn, when his father died, because um, they say, you know, look, you were 17 and witnessed a tragedy and, and you ran. Okay, that's fine. They don't, we don't know how old he is in present day, so I don't know that this helps us to know that he's 17 when it happened. You know, you got to know what, how old he is in present day, and they don't tell us. So I thought, well, let's look at the age of the actor, Nick Cage. Maybe that'll help us, right? Because we learned that he was 42 when the film uh, was made. Okay, well, let's see how that works out. If it's 1986, and we know he's 17 then, so subtract 17, but add Nick Cage's age of 42, we get eh, 2011. I don't know. I don't like 2011. 2011 doesn't work for me. So sometimes you can take an actor's age to try to, you know, do the math. But in this case, I don't think it works. We're going to need something else. By the way, this article is really funny, though. It's talking about whether Nick Cage's abs are real or not, because he had some fantastic abs. And it turns out they were real. So there you go. Go figure. All right. So we still don't know the year, but... Now, we get a nice clue here. Notice this poster, which has been up there for a while. Clearly, it's very deteriorated. But it has a Tuesday, the 26th of September date. Well, Tuesday, the 26th works in 2006. So my guess is that was uh, put up in, uh, you know, around the time frame of, of September 2006. So it's clearly been a while since September 2006 because of the deterioration. Okay, that's helpful. We know it's after September of 2006. Then we get a license plate. Yay. Now, it starts off very blurry, and it's spinning, actually. But then as it continues to spin, you got to pause it in just the right place, but we can get a June of 08. Okay, that's helpful. So we know it has to be after September of 2006 and before June of 2008, because that's when the license plate expires. They don't give us anything more, so I'm going to split the difference and put it in 2007. The question is just when in 2007, because by the way, that's when the movie came out. So, okay, 2007. Well, we do get some very, very green uh, trees, but we're in Texas. So it's probably always green in Texas. I mean, it's not always green, but it's probably often green. But man, this is really flush, and we see some yellows and other colors. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to put it more in a mid-year, I guess. I, again, they don't give us a year and they don't give us a month, so we just kind of have to, you know, do the best we can. All right, 
So one other thing I want to mention about the, mo the movie is how cool it is when that original Ghost Rider from 150 years ago shows back up and turns his horse into fire. Oh my word, so cool. Look at that, the two of them together. I could just watch this scene over and over again. It was just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So cool, so, so very cool. All right, so I do need to mention the main villain is Black Heart. Keep that in mind, Black Heart, because there's other villains that start with the word black that he ends up fighting in the video game. But Black Heart, who is the son of Mephisto, and of course Mephisto is the, the devil. I'm bringing that up because he is gonna be mentioned in the video game, and that will help us tie in when the video game happens in the timeline. Uh, then also, it is interesting, Johnny turns down the devil's offer to take away the curse at the end, because Johnny actually ends up uh, fighting and defeating Blackheart here, who is rebelling against his own father. And so the devil's like, hey, I'll take away your curse. But Johnny says, no, no, I, I want to own the curse, and I'm going to use it against you. <laughs> and the devil's like, oh, I will make you pay for this. So yeah, Johnny keeps the the, the spirit of vengeance upon him and uh, now is in a war with the, with the devil, basically. Okay, so where am I going to place this movie? As I mentioned, you know, mid-July, -Ju June timeframe uh, in 2007. It has to be after June, by the way, because the license plate member was June of 2008. So it has to be after June, but that the, the trees look so nice that I'm going to have put it as close to June as I can. So July of 2007. Okay, how about the video game? So the video game is interesting. It combines comic uh, story panels where they're basically just telling you what's happening, and then obviously playing action. So this was one of the panels, and then this is some of the playing action. It's really cool. I would I would like to have played this game. I mean, he just kicks butt with his chain, wiping out everything in sight. He looks incredible on his bike, um, and, and that's a lot of fun. And then here he's sliding. You have to slide under some of the barriers. Notice there's not enough room to fit uh, upright. So here he's making a slide mark as he goes under. It's just really cool. Okay, so some of the villains he fights are Lilith. Awesome and Blackout. Now remember, the other one was Black Heart. This is Blackout. So notice Blackout is saying, some friends of mine are calling on Roxanne, and Roxanne was his girlfriend from the movie, so it makes it seem like this isn't too long after the movie, because they're going after his girlfriend. Um, but let me just say, don't forget what Blackout looks like here, because this is gonna be a real problem when we get to Spirit of Vengeance. All right, so then when he fights Blackout, it's really hard to see because uh, it was kind of blurry uh, video because they're moving so fast, but that is Ghost Rider and Blackout, and they're on the water for some reason. Blackout's in the speedboat, <laughs> and Ghost Rider is on his motorcycle. So it was an odd setting for the battle, but it works. That's fine. Uh, but then uh, we also see Blade shows up. That's cool. He's not actually in the game. Like, you don't play him, but he's in the story panels, and he's actually helping uh, Ghost Rider um, save Roxanne and some other uh, plot points in the background. Uh, then, now, we get to Black Heart. Remember, Black Heart was the villain that he fought in uh, the first movie. And notice he says, you didn't think I'd stay locked up for long, did you? Okay, so the fact that he makes it sound like this wasn't that long ago, and the fact the villains are going after Roxanne, it just seems to me like it's not happening too long after that first movie. Because now uh, Blackheart's saying, uh, let's take this outside, shall we dance again? And he is actually the final boss battle, is Blackheart. And boy, does he look nasty in his uh, boss form there. Okay, so... Again, they don't tell us much. I just have to kind of go with the best I can. I'm going to go with August of 2007. I don't think it's very long after the movie. Um, but, you know, let me know your thoughts. I could easily see it by September, October, but I still think it's in the same year because they talk about it being very, very recent. Okay, let's end this out with Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And this gets very interesting when we look at uh, the movie Spirit of Vengeance and the video game. Okay, so first of all, it's worth mentioning that Spirit of Vengeance was labeled as a Marvel Knights project. So what was that? Well, there were two and only two Marvel Knights movies, both Punisher Warzone with uh, Ray Stevenson, RIP, man. That dude is awesome. Uh, he was a good Punisher. Um, but anyway, Ray Stevenson, uh, his movie in 2008 was labeled Marvel Knights, as was Ghost Rider. And of course, Marvel Knights was also a label used heavily in the comics. But in the movies, two of them were labeled that way. There's no crossover between them, but it kind of implies they're in the same universe. So that's kind of cool. All right. So the movie Spirit of Vengeance starts with a retelling of Johnny's origin, which makes you kind of wonder, is this connected to the first movie? But we'll see definitively that it is as we move forward. But notice the devil is saying, you look like you could use a little help. And this scenario they're in right here, the, the scene, 
looks totally different, by the way, from the first movie. Uh, the contract looks different. Are you willing to make a deal? That doesn't look exactly like the original one. Johnny does not cut his wrist on, on glass to sign it, so that's kind of odd. And of course, the devil is being played by a new actor, which that's okay, because remember, they explain that he burns out his body, so he has to have a new body by the time this movie is taking place, but this is a flashback. So they're flashing back to a different body? I don't know. I, that was kind of odd. But anyway, I don't know why they retold the origin like this, other than they're kind of assuming maybe you didn't see the first movie, and we'll see mention of that uh, later. Okay, so now we learn what he's been up to. The darkness inside of me only gets stronger, and that's why I had to run, he says. In fact, halfway across the world. So that's another reason why I'm putting the video game as close as I can to the first movie, because it seems like you know, he told the devil, I want to keep this curse and I'm going to fight you. But before long, it started to take him over and he had to flee. So it feels like, you know, the video game has to be pretty close to that last movie. But anyway, he says, I'm still running. So this whole time he's been running. Um, and he really meant he's running halfway across the world because most of the movie takes place in Eastern Europe. Wow. And also a little bit of it in Turkey. Why is that important? Well, you might remember in the first movie, a license plate was so helpful in placing the movie. Well, in Europe, the license plates don't have a year on it. Look at this license plate here. They give you such a nice close-up of it. No year. Here's another one. No year. And another one. No year. So it just figures in a movie where the years aren't on the license plates, we get clear views of a ton of them. Grr. And why don't they have them on? How do the cops know whether to pull somebody over? Because you can't tell when it expires. I don't know how it works in Europe. Anyway, no dates. So that is not helpful at all. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the plot of the movie. A lady named Nadja, uh, the, the ghostwriter meets up with, made a deal with the devil. Um, he asked for something in return, she says, and only Nick Cage can deliver this line. So you're the devil's baby mama. <laughs> He's really funny in this movie. I, I like the first movie better, but he is hilarious in this movie. So yes, she is the devil's baby mama. Look at her closing her eyes like, oh my gosh, why do you have to say it that way? But anyway, turns out, yes, he is the, that, that this, this child they're trying to rescue is the devil's son. And the devil says, you have all the power that I have inside of you. And this corporal form, referring to the kid, can wield the power without burning itself up. So the devil's d decision here is, I don't want to have to keep changing bodies. I, you know, I, I've, I've had a son now and I want your body. So he wants to take over this kid's body. Yikes. So... The reason that Nick Cage gets enlisted in all this, Johnny Blaze, is because he meets up with Heimdall, but it really isn't Heimdall. His name is Moreau, but yeah, totally that's Heimdall. Um, and he says, if you bring us the boy, we will lift your curse. So, I mean, he didn't, uh, Johnny Blaze didn't even want to really get involved, but hey, with the option now to get rid of the curse, even though he wanted to keep it, remember at the end of the first movie, this has been years later, and now he wants it gone. So, now let's talk about an issue. So Black Out, not Black Heart, <laughs> who was the son of the devil, but Black Out is one of the main villains. Here's the problem. We actually see his origin in this movie. So on the left is Kerrigan. That's his name before he got turned into Black Out. And on the right is him once the devil turns him into Black Out. Well, remember in the video game, he was already Black Out. So I don't know that the video game is canon. In fact, even on the wiki, they have this comment saying a version of Blackout was featured in the Ghost Rider video game voiced by Lex Lang. However, due to the differences in the portrayal of the character, and yeah, I would say major differences, like an entire new origin, the game's version is not considered canon to Earth 121347. Now, I will say, on the same wiki in different locations, they do say it's canon. So I, I think they might have an error... Uh, in one of those two places. But I tend to agree with this comment on the wiki. I don't see how the video game can be canon since he's already blackout in the video game. And this is years later when he becomes blackout. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, I know people like these video games to connect to the movies, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know how to make that work, honestly. Unless it's the second blackout, I guess you could go that route. It's blackout number two. That's possible. Okay, that could work. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. All right, so I do love some of the very cool vehicle transformations in this movie. Ghost Rider gets inside, well, a giant crane and turns this thing on fire. That was really cool. And later he turns a, a truck, uh, kind of a, a tank-like truck onto, on fire. That's really cool. And then, yes, we do get to see what it's like for him to pee. So I guess we needed that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's like a flamethrower, right? So too funny. All right. 
uh, then. Remember, Moreau said, I'll take away your, your powers. Well, uh, they deliver the boy to Moreau, and Moreau does indeed take away his powers, and then the boy gets captured again. So now Johnny Blaze wants his powers back. So we get a little bit of lore behind the rider, and we learn that originally the rider was an alien, or an alien, an angel, angel, sorry, they went crazy. So now Blaze taps into the power of that angel, no longer the devil, but the angel, and sure enough, he's able to turn into blue flames. So he's able to rescue the boy and all ends well in the movie, but here's the real key. The movie ends with him being blue. And I know that's blurry, but he was driving really fast. It was hard to get a good capture. But yeah, he's definitely got blue flames going forward. So I'm assuming if there had been a third movie in the Ghost Rider saga, we'd have learned you know, even more about the difference with these blue flames. But I just wanted to bring that up because that's, that's kind of interesting. So when is this movie happening? Well, from a timing standpoint, we do see that it is harvest season uh, in Europe. And I did notice that Europe seems to have two harvest seasons, one early and one later. I'm thinking this has got to be the second one because people are really dressed warmly, notice, and this gentleman's, that's his uh, breath showing up in the air because it's really, really cold. So I'm going to put it more in a September time frame. But what year? They give us nothing, like as in nothing, to figure out the year. So I will turn to an article. I don't like having to do this, but it's the only thing we can do. So David Goyer said the story picks up eight years after the first film. What? Why is it eight years after? The movie came out in 2012, which is only five years. I have no idea why he picked eight years other than he wanted it to be quite a long time. So, okay, fine. He says, you don't have to have seen the first film. It doesn't contradict anything that happened in the first film, but we're pretending that our audience hasn't seen it. It's as if you took that same character where things ended in the first film and then picked it up eight years later. He's in a much darker existential place. Okay, so they're saying they are definitely connected. That's, by the way, why I think we got the new origin. Uh, it wasn't like it was changing the origin. It didn't contradict it. It just showed it a little differently. Um, but yeah, they're definitely connected and they're eight years apart. So uh, remember I said September and now eight years after 2007, well, that's gonna put us in September of 2015. So the second harvest season and uh, 2015. Very wild, because it's three years after, it's happening three years after the movie came out. Huh, not sure what to think about that, but there you go. Okay, so that is the Hulk and the Ghost Rider timelines. Um, now, let me talk briefly about whether or not the Ghost Rider in those two movies is tied to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you've watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., particularly season four, um, and in particular, the episode number six, The Good Samaritan, we learn the origin of Robbie Reyes's version of The Ghost Rider, which you can see there. This episode is taking place in March of 2017, but it gives us a flashback to an earlier date. And in particular, April of 2012 is where the wiki places it, and I think they're probably right. So Blaze, Johnny Blaze, as in the Johnny Blaze, transfers his powers from himself to Robbie Reyes because Robbie asked for the powers, and here's Robbie saying, whatever was inside of him, he passed on to me, and basically he became Ghost Rider. So you can already see there's no way they're connected to the movies, because number one, the flame isn't blue, right? Remember, we saw it was blue. And then number two, if the wiki is correct, and I'm sure they are, that this is happening in April of 2012, well, of course, we saw it was uh, September of 2015, when the second movie happened and he was still Johnny Blaze. So that's okay. It's, it's fine that they're not tied together. This is still Johnny Blaze giving Robbie Reyes his powers. It's just not the Johnny Blaze from the movies. All right, so then here, here's Robbie Reyes in his human form saying, you know, that's the deal I made. I swore to go after those who spilled innocent blood and then I was reborn. So I just wanted to bring that up in case anybody wondered if they were connected. Uh, I don't see any way that they can possibly be connected. So different Ghost Rider. All right, so those are the timelines. Uh, as always, I have updated them in my Google Timeline uh, document. Notice that it is sorted initially by timeline, month, and year, because I love that. But you can sort it by release month and release year. You can do that by going to the sort option. And you can even filter. If you don't want to see everything in here, you can filter it down. There's lots of filter options, as you can see. In particular, if you go by multiversal stuff, so you filter by game, you know, show, movie, etc. Now you can whittle it down to just the things that are happening across the multiverse. And in particular, here are the ones we that have been placed now. We just placed Hulk and the Hulk game, Ghost Rider and the Ghost Rider game, and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. 
So yeah, you can download this. You can have fun with it. I will leave a pinned comment so you know where to find it. Also, I do have a document that talks about all the different multiversal films. Uh, in, this case, in this case, they're actually by release uh, date because I think that's a little easier in this case. Um, so I have covered the timeline for Blade. That's the only one on this page that I've covered. The rest of these I, I will probably get to one day, but I don't see any of them showing up in Deadpool and Wolverine and probably not even in Secret Wars. But the second page, I've covered everything on this except for, at this point, Mutant X, Man-Thing, and the Ray Stevenson, RIP, uh, Punisher, a war zone. So I will do those eventually. I don't see any of those three showing up in Deadpool and Wolverine, but I will definitely cover them before Secret Wars um, to, you know, to complete this page out. Um, by the way, I have not covered MODOK or Hitmonkey. Uh, Hitmonkey season two coming out very right around the corner because uh, there's just no way those are going to show up. I do cover, though, Moon Girl. That's such a great show. Got to check out Moon Girl if you've never seen it. All right, so there you go. Uh, that is the timelines that we've done so far. Uh, let me know what else you would like me to do timelines on. And don't forget, July contest, right? Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steel book. And of course, we have that membership option in case you might be interested in that. And lastly, I love to talk about our Discord. Uh, so much stuff going on. Here we can see X Monday rewatches uh, going through July. We have X, uh, we are, sorry, Mutant Multiverse and Mutant rewatches on Wednesdays. And here's some more of those going all the way into July. And we have WandaVision and Fox First rewatches on Fridays. So always watching some good stuff. And of course, we mostly talk about Star Wars, DC, and Marvel, but we do have a other media forum, and you can talk about whatever you want. 1,400 members on the Discord server across the globe, so conversations 24-7, and we would like you to be part of them. I will leave a pinned comment so you can join the Discord. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we will all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.